into death right shaman experiment once flint hoof bores mog flunkies and then on three obviously the the sky's the limit for him uh i definitely think with that i want plenty like i just want some pillar of flames just to go with the mana but that's just like me needing value yeah sure and efficiency something to do so we are underway here in round three of the star city games open series our second standard open here tim Fillmore on the right chris galliano on the left Five color Verdant Haven, card that you and Evan deemed unplayable. Shame well, on you both. We've seen it twice this weekend. Both players starting with Blood Crips. Uh, probably Tim's thinking it's a little bit more aggressive on the other side than it actually is. Yeah. As we do see a Flint of Four here for Tim. So he does have a two drop. One drops in the deck, of course, our experiment one. He does have three copies of Deathrite Shaman as well. And doesn't look like we're going to see any Rakdos Cacklers today. No, there's none of those. These junk, uh, or these experiment Jun decks are definitely just running away from the red drops and keeping on the green ones since the junk deck is so popular. And so we do see Flint Hub 4 coming on in. Chris does not have a turn to Farsi. Does not have it doesn't look like he has a turn to removal spell either. So we'll see what or Tim is able he... to follow up with here. No turn three play either. Uh, this just means that we're probably gonna see Searing Spear or um, a Hellrider next turn. And so we have a chromantic lantern here for Chris. Tim's going to read that, and that is, of course, the artifact that does tap for all the colors of the rainbow and allows your lands to do the exact same thing. I was playing a deck with Vessel of the Souls, or Lost Vessel of Souls, or whatever it was called. Yeah, the three mana artifact. And yeah. then they previewed that, and I was like, well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that card became obsolete rather quickly, and we are going to see Hellrider, as you said. Two triggers from the Hellrider, plus six damage, going to equal eight for the turn. Drum so Tim off to a very nice start here. Not having one drop kind of stinks, not having a three drop either, but... You know, the beatdowns are here. Yes, and the blue-white cards in Chris's hands do not seem to be uh, Supreme Verdicts. They look like two Sphinxes reps. That's not really going to do exactly what he needs for this. Hopefully we get a Miracle Terminus. Yeah, he does have four copies of Thrag Tusk as well, so if yes. he does have a land on Thrag Tusk, they'll be sitting fairly pretty here. As we do see, Tim does have a couple cards in his hand. It looks like he has a Gorkhan Rampager and a Searing Spear over there as well. He is definitely threatening lethal next turn if Chris does not deal with this Hellrider. And again, there are two Sphinxes Revelations over there in Chris's hand. Chris will draw a card. We do see a Sun Petal Grove go to his hand. You also see another Chromatic Lantern over there in his hand as well. So we'll see if he can able, if he's able, excuse me, to stabilize this board. Kind of come back because he's certainly behind right now. Looks very rough. And will he just pass the turn back? He's he does just pass it back. He is praying and hoping that uh, Tim is not able to deal an additional three points of damage, which we both know is true. As Tim does draw a Strangle Root Geist for the turn, see if he's going to elect to cast that. Maybe he wants to go the Gore Clan Rampager route. Maybe he wants to leave up Searing Spear as well. We'll see what, exactly what avenue he looks to take here, as he does have a very good board presence and is threatening lethal this turn. And just weighing his options, he you know when when your opponent plays a chromantic lantern, you really don't know what to expect. Yeah, and anything is possible. Yeah, you would think if your opponent's on the draw, you'd keep more than just that. But uh, Chris's draw did not get there, and that is going to present lethal damage. And so now we see a stringer root guys. Hold on. You see, you see, as Chris saying, one moment before you go to your attacks. We're here, going to draw a card, and we're, we're going to try to find a miracle. And I think he has one in his hand, so he's got three left. <laughs> Have you ever seen it? I've never seen the Sphinx for one, no miracle. I, really, I, know he, I only ever see it off Think Twice. I don't ever really yeah. see it off of that. As we do see a lethal attacker, Chris Galliano is going to concede the game. So Tim, Tim Fillmore does win game one with Experiment Jund over Chris Galliano and his five-color Verdant Haven deck. And as Chris does look towards his sideboard, we'll do the exact same thing here. Four copies of Abundant Grove, three copies of Tree Redemption, three copies of Slaughter Games, two Elder Scale Worms, a Sphere of Safety, a Ground Seal, and a Syncopate. I think we're definitely going to see those Tree Redemptions come in a card and see for a while. Yeah, and, and, and we're going to see those Elder Scale Worms too. That's yeah. very good against these aggressive decks. Uh, Timothy only has two Dreadbores in the main deck, along with two Tragic Slips after sideboard that can deal with that. But if you've got an Elder Scale Worm in play, I do not think you are going to be trying to allow uh, Tragic Slip to deal with anything. Yeah. You just take, you, I mean, why is anything in combat? Yeah. So uh, we have two Dreadboards that hopefully he keeps in because Elder Skull Worm is a beating for people that are not prepared for it. It'll be interesting to see if he even leaves in Dreadbore again because he didn't actually see any creatures that game. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no real tip off. You can probably assume that Thraktos is going to leave that. And Dread Dreadbore and Thraktos, not really the best use for that exactly, card. Exactly, so yeah. We'll be, I'll be surprised if we even do see Dreadbore in his deck. Both Sideboard, well, of course, Searing Spear will still be there, but we'll Dreadbore. And even if he doesn't have the Dreadbores, uh, the, the surprising thing is 
Tim is going to be very hungry for the uh, Elder Scale brain. Sure. But he doesn't even know it yet. Yeah. He's just going to find out. He's going to be like, yeah, that, that's satisfying. I'm going to I'm gonna eat that. Yeah. With, with two copies of Aptide for brains. Uh, he does have a... That's about it. As well as conscripts, that could also steal it in attack, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, surprisingly, I love that he is one of the only experiment gen players to cut back on those Hellriders and play the four Falcon Riders Aristocrats. Yeah. So maybe he was watching yesterday or playing, but he is on, on my side of Team Falcon Riders Aristocrat. Yeah, he's got four of those and only two Hellriders in his deck. Yeah. And the other thing that you find a side for that might come in, not sure, of course, are those two Algari charms. Of course, he didn't see Supreme, he didn't see Supreme Verdict in that he's game. But I think, you know, maybe for a chromatic lantern deck, you're assuming that there's some removal there. Might be able to regenerate your guys for a bit of a blowout. Not really going to use the minus one, minus one mode very much, but you might be able to find a use for that card where some of those other cards are a little bit more, you know, not 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 suited to be very good in this matchup, like an Abrupt yes. Decay. And, uh, I mean, you show me a deck that has Sphinx's Revelation and not a Supreme Verdict, and I'll show you a deck that probably doesn't exist. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. Now, he, of course, does have those supreme, four Supreme Verdicts, also four Terminus as well, so uh, certainly has removal of his deck because Chris was unable to find him. Right that's now, all. If you would like to yeah. come play, uh, we still, we right have, now, we the have best thing about five color Verdict is it has four different utility lands, but still no Caverns. He just does not think that Cavern is a necessity in this metagame. Uh, I mean, he added a Desert Lighthouse, so now he is up to three Nephalia Drown Yards, one Kessig Wolf Run, one Alchemist Refuge, and one Desert Lighthouse. What a crazy brew. Yeah, definitely a brew. You now, maybe at some point he'll find room to put Cavern, Cavern of Souls into his deck. You know, those Esper matchups, those Blood Red matchups where they have Syncopates and Dissipates mm -hmm. and Counterfluxes flying around, not being able to resolve those Sylvan Primordials can be detrimental. Um, but, you know, he, we did see him on camera yesterday defeat Josh Martinez playing Blue White Red, so. Maybe, maybe we're just wrong. Who knows? I mean, yeah, maybe there's just not enough counter spells to merit it. I mean, we are a Drown Yard deck with Slaughter Games, with Sphinx's Revelation. A lot of powerful cards for these control matchups. They just have a tough time getting ground against a deck with so many angles. Yeah. And we do see Chris is going to shuffle up here. Tim looks ready to go. And what Tim probably is feeling is a pretty good matchup for him. He's got this super aggressive deck. He's got some resilient threats. You know, obviously not as fast as an Eye Blitz deck, but, you know, definitely a... Definitely powerful. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, I don't think he's assuming that there's going to be abundant growth and sphere of safety out of the board. How how awesome mm -hmm. would it be to to find that one of sphere of safety after abundant growth in a couple times? That would be pretty. Awesome. That has to be right. Like he has to bring the abundant growth in if he's sphere of safety, mostly to just try to draw into the important cards in this matchup. Yeah. When we do begin on, when we do get underway here, Tree of Redemption is a card we'll bring up on the screen for you guys, and that was a card that, of course, you were at Pro Tour Barcelona competing there, and that was a card that did see some play as you could flip it back and forth and start gaining a whole bunch of life. Oh, and if you if you silver uh, heart it or or uh, township, you yeah. start gaining life. Yeah, you actually start gaining life. That interaction's pretty neat there. So we'll see if those do come in again. That 013 wall that has uh, Defender is a card that I'm a little bit surprised we haven't seen more of. I think if Blitz was dominating the format a little bit more, maybe you would see more of that card, but yeah, with I, Junk Reanimator running rampant, you don't really see it that much. Yeah, and I also feel that maybe like there's there's other options, right? There's Tristani and Faith Fender. I think a lot of cards do similar things where those cards are a little bit more high end pick immediately. Sure. Uh, Tree Redemption needs a little bit of time and doesn't do anything uh, on the board. So we're seeing Chris ponder mulliganing. He doesn't look like he wants to. It looks like he's in pain. He does. Bad I mean, he's, breakfast? He's down a game. He's in an aggressive matchup. Uh, probably not the one that he wants to play against, but he is going to keep it. He's going to keep it. He taps on his deck because he does just play that Temple Guard and passes the turn back. Tim is going to... Did he keep to, a one-lander? He may have. We saw him do it on camera last time as well, as Tim has a turn one death right shaman here. So let's see if Chris da, is able to da, draw da, out of it. He draws a Temple yes. Garden and does pass the turn back. Looks like he does have a couple more lands there. Maybe he's just missing some colors. Maybe just searching for the Chromatic Lantern. Because we do see Overgrown Tomb coming to play untapped here for Tim. And we'll see what kind of follow-up he has. Uh, it's a Stranguru Geist turn. The Burning Tramorcers are still left in the deck. Oh, Stranguru Geist it is. Here comes that and here comes the Deathrite Shaman. He's putting Chris down to 17. So Chris draws a forest for the turn. He's going to play Sunfall Grove and pass the turn back. Tim untaps. He draws. Let's see if he's able to find some red banner to, to complete the tricolor deck. You see him searching through those. We see another Strangaroo Geist here in main phase one. 
And mm -hmm. five damage, dropping Chris down to 12. So here come the beatdowns. He does just pass the turn back, so no red mana as Chris does draw a Staff of Nin for the turn. Plays the Forest and just does say go. If you're Tim here, you might be a little bit scared of Restoration Angel. You didn't see anything in game one, really, so it yeah. is a little bit scary as that's a common play in this format. I mean, but it is uh, beneficial when you have stronger guys. Yeah. Just the question is, are those uh, are those Deathrite Chomp? Is that Deathrite Chomp, excuse me, going to come in or not? You see him really giving this turn some thought, especially when he doesn't have any red mana. But yeah. Deathrite Shaman is not scared. It's coming across. Chris does not have the Restoration Angel, none in his deck list, which we have the privilege of knowing. So he's going to go down to seven. And Tim, again, does just pass the turn back. Now we have that land. Now we get to start with a Thrag Tusk. Uh, what's great is, uh, since Tim is getting a little land screwed, this gives Chris a chance to get out of this. And if he has another land, he gets a Stefan in. And that, that should be able to you know take away this game. So we do see Chris does go back up to 12 from the Thraktus. Tim draws another Strangaroo Geist. He's, of course, going to play it. And he says, all right, everybody, let's get in there. I, get, I think even Deathrite Shopping wants to come in. Let's yeah. get some damage through. And so here comes that. And so Thraktus is going to get in front of something. We'll see what it's going to be. I would probably just take care of the Deathrite Shaman right now. I think it's going to deal less damage over the course of the game. If you want to, like, eat away at these... Um, Stronger looks like slowly, because next turn I don't think you want to trade your Thrag Tusk, but you can use a Stefanin to poke away at one of them. So if you take the Death Rite Shaman next turn, you only take two damage. Sure. Well, we do see that Tim does block a Stranger Root. Guys does come back from Undying. Five damage does, does finally do come across. We see Chris play a Force. We do know about that Stefanin as he did draw a Supreme Verdict with something he just can't cast right now, missing that blue mana. But Stefanin looking to try to stabilize this game. Yeah, I think we're one drag mangler away from, from this game being over. And we hit Tim a blood crypt. That's... a blood crypt. What can he do with that red man? Well, that's he can question. blood rush for lethal. Uh, I think that's something like that he's probably going to do. Uh, and that is going to be the game. We did see the Gorkhan Rampager. Uh, Chris is tapped out. He can just uh, blood rush on the 3-2 if that gets blocked. Either way, that's enough damage. That's four damage plus... Uh, two from the Stranger Root that lives through the Stefanin, and one from the Deathrite Shaman. So if he does have a Gorklan Rampager in his hand, that will be a lethal attack. We're not quite sure if he has one or not, as he is going to play that Blood Crypt untapped. going to bring himself down to 16. You do see a Dreadbore there, and you actually do see him pull that Gorklan Rampager forward to his hand. And now we are going to see the attacks here with the three Stranger Root guys and that Deathrite Shaman. We're going to see Staff of Nin target that Strangle Root Geist. And he is going to Gorklan Rampager in response. Right now, the Blood Rush giving plus four, plus four, and Trample in response to that Staff of Nin activation. And what it looks like we do have here, Brad, is going to be a lethal attack by Tim, Tim Finnamore. Uh, As yeah. you see, Chris is trying to figure out what blocks can I make with this Thraktus to stay alive. Thraktus is such a good card. Why isn't it saving me now? But it doesn't look like it's going to be able to do that. Yeah, and uh, if there was a line that that wouldn't have been been uh, been lethal because if he just blocked the Deathrite Shaman, then he has three two ones that you can't do that to. So you can block, take the damage. You can play around the Gore Clan Rampager yep. that way, and he would have survived. Sure. Um, getting to see what was on top of his deck after that that uh, Staff of Nin trigger.